Hi everyone, my name is Leonardo Silenzi and today we are going to talk about chemical bonds. Now I'm going to talk about two different types of bonds, covalent bonds and non-covalent bonds. Let's see the characteristics. So in covalent bonds, electrons are shared between pairs of atoms. The second characteristic about covalent bonds is that they are very strong bonds. Instead, about non-covalent bonds, they are attractive forces, they are weak bonds, and their strength is in the numbers of the, no the non-covalent bonds. Covalent bonds are much stronger than non-covalent bonds. So, if we make a graph where on the y-axis we put the bond's energy per kilojoule per mole, now let me label the different energies, 100, 200, 300, 400, until 500, we see that the covalent bonds are around uh, the 200, 300, 400, 500 kilojoules per mole. So it means that it takes this amount of energy to break one of them. And the ones I'm writing right now are all covalent bonds. Instead, if we look at the non-covalent bonds, they are much more weaker. So, now let's start talking about some examples of non-covalent bonds. For example, the, what I just drew is DNA, and uh, we have a protein. And uh, the DNA can have an interaction with protein thanks to non-covalent bonds. Now, let's take a look at the different types of non-covalent bonds. We have four, what I'm going to describe in this video. We have hydrogen bonds, ionic bonds, attraction between charged atoms, hydrophobic interactions that are not exactly a bond, but we'll see later what they are. And then we have the van der Waals forces. So today we're going to talk about those four types of non-covalent bonds. It's important to highlight that non-covalent bonds in biological systems occur in water. So it's good to talk about the, the structure of water and some characteristics about water. Water is a dipole. And is excessively hydrogen bonded. Now let's see some, uh, let me draw the structure of water and let me explain you what it means that it's a dipole. Water is H2O as you know, it contains one atom of oxygen and two of hydrogens and we see it has a partial negative charge on the oxygen and a partial positive charge on the hydrogens. Let's see the structure of uh, water from another perspective. So we put the two compares, uh, the hydrogens, uh, and we see that there is a partial positive charge on the hydrogens and two partial pos negative charges on the oxygen. I said before that water forms uh, hydrogen bonds. Let's see how. In an hydrogen bond, there is always uh, in water an oxygen that makes an hydrogen bond with an hydrogen of another water molecule. Or we can say that the, the hydrogen of the other water molecule make an hydrogen bond with the, with the oxygen. Hydrogen bonds form between H and O, oxygen, or nitrogen. 
And uh, so those are some of the examples. We have an uh, atom of carbon that is linked with oxygen and this oxygen makes an hydrogen bond with an hydrogen that is linked to a nitrogen. Another example, always we have the CO bond covalent that makes an hydrogen bond with an hydrogen that is connected with an oxygen. So you see there is always a partial positive charge or a partial negative charge on on the hydrogen and the oxygen. Then we have a nitrogen atom that has a partial negative charge that is linked to two atoms of carbon and it, there is an hydrogen bond between a nitrogen that is, that is linked to another nitrogen. Those are other different examples. We have a C double bond to O that makes a nitrogen bond with the uh, hydrogen bonded to an oxygen and um, several other examples. So now let's take a look at a practical example of where we can find those hydrogen bonds. And uh, the DNA structure is held together by hydrogen bonds. In particular, the bases that link the two strands of DNA are linked through hydrogen bonds. So we have cytosine and guanine makes three hydrogen bonds and TNA respectively make two hydrogen bonds. Another example, glucose dissolves in water and uh, it is due, the, it's because it's able to make hydrogen bonds with water. So the next time you're gonna drink a cup of water with sugar, you're gonna see that it dissolves in water. It's because it, the formation of hydrogen bonds now, let's talk about the second type of non-covalent bonds, which are ionic bonds attraction between charge atoms. Ionic bonding is the complete transfer of valence electron or electrons, depend by, by which atom we are talking about, between two atoms. It is a type of chemical bond that generates two oppositely charged ions. In ionic bonds, the metal loses electrons to become a positively charged cation, whereas the non-metal accepts those electrons to become a negatively charged anion. A very common example is sodium chloride, and it becomes Na plus and Cl minus, the uh, salt, normal salt that we use in the kitchen. to become a negatively charged anion, okay? Another type of non-covalent bonds is an hydrophobic interaction. Those are not properly a true bonds. As I said, it's more an, in, an interaction. And uh, hydrophobic <coughs> means water fearing. And those interactions keep polar and nonpolar compounds separated. So let's think about water, which is a polar molecule. I'm gonna draw some water molecules. Gonna take a little while. And uh, let's say oil. Oil is not polar. So why it's not soluble in water? oil because it's hydrophobic it's not polar it can only make those hydrogen bonds and uh, so you will see that the oil molecules will try to st stick together thanks because of these uh, hydrophobic interactions polar and non-polar as I said now let's see at the last non-covalent bond which are the van der Waals forces the van der Waals forces are very weak, short-range, electrostatic, attractive forces between uncharged molecules. 
Those forces arise from the interaction of permanent or transient electric dipole moments. What actually happens is that, let's say you have a molecule and there are electrons orbiting around the different atoms, right? If those electrons concentrate, all of them, on, in one part of the molecule, there will be an instantaneous dipole that can interact and create those, this force with another molecule that have an instantaneous dipole. Thank you for your attention and uh, if you enjoyed the video please subscribe to the channel and uh, share it. Thank you.